Hey everybody, so we're gonna, today we're going to be talking about IR spectrometry. Okay, um, one thing, first things first, what is IR? IR is a tool that's used by organic chemists to identify functional groups in a structure. So just remember that what IR tells you is a functional group in a molecule. So just looking at IR, the only thing you can figure out is what functional group is there. Looking at different, looking at different kind of machines like NMR, mass spec, can tell you the whole structure. But just looking at IR by itself, we just know the functional group. So there's just pieces of the puzzle where we have to, we have to solve just for the functional group, for using mass spec in the next videos when we're talking about it, where it's going to be with the mass and NMR is going to tell you the neighboring environments. So today, IR and it's the functional group. So I want to do like a line diagram where I show you how to, or which region do what molecules belong, or what stretches are there. So let's say from 600 to 1400 is called the fingerprint region. And from here, these structures from here is C single bond C, C single bond N, and C single bond O. Usually for a first year chemistry course, or first year organic chemistry course, or second year organic chemistry course, the fingerprint region is not enough information, or it doesn't tell you much about it, because it's a cluster of stretches in one region. So we move on to from six, like another region, which is 1600 to 1800. And in this region, it's just C double bond C, C double bond N, and C double bond O. And there's many variations of these stretches, and we will come back to them. Let's say if it's a ketone, it's a different stretch, an aldehyde, an acid, an ester, they're all different stretches. And we will come back to them. And what happens when there's conjugation of double bonds, and we'll come back to that too. So let's just put, the, put each molecule, each stretch in different regions, and then come back and put it everything together. Another important one is 2200. 2200 stretch is important because Anything close to but below 2200, let's say 2100, it's a C triple bond C stretch. Anything above 2200, let's say 2220, 2230, it could be a C triple bond N stretch. A 3000 mark is a very important mark to know. The way I would recommend is start off your IR problems by putting a, like a dotted line or straight line, doesn't matter, whichever you prefer. And above 3000, are your stretches for your C bond C H stretch. So this stretch right here. Sorry, I'm sorry, there's a double bond right here. Anything, this is all this tells you unsaturation. Anything above that is unsaturated. Anything below is fully saturated. So let's say C bond C H stretch. Could be here, right here. Uh, another important one to know is to around 3300 to 3500 are your OH stretches, which are very broad, easily identifiable, you can easily identify them, and an NH stretch can also be, and depending on different ones, we'll talk about them as well. Okay, so these are some basic ideas of where, what kind of stretches and what, what numbers to know. On your test, these numbers will be given to you, but I would recommend knowing them by heart because it'll be easier for you to so save time on the test and it'll be easier just to do a question. So, so let's start with a C double bond O, and there, what variations do we have? There are many kinds of C double bond O, so what I mean by that is one of them is a ketone. And a ketone stretch is around 1710. Another one could be a C double bond HR, which is called an aldehyde, and the stretch for this is 1725. And also there's another stretch for 1720, 17. Sorry, 2700 and 2800. Another one is an acid. An acids are very easily, you can tell where they are because they technically cover most of your IR because they go from 2500 to 3500. It's a broad peak. So if you see a very broad peak that's covering almost this, part, this much of your IR, that you know that there is an acid group in your molecule. Another one is an ester. Esters are around a little bit higher than aldehyde, which is 1735. Usually this this is something that comes with a test a, a more often because professors like to throw it out there and they want to know your knowledge. 
One important one also is something like that. And I want you guys to tell me what functional group this is. Take your time. So that is called an amide. Why an amide? Why not just a ketone and an amine? It's because they're together, this referred to as amide. And the stretch for this, do you think it's gonna be lower or higher? Think about it. So if you guess if you guess lower, you're right, it is gonna be lower. So if it's lower, why is it lower now? It's around 1630 to 1660. It's because there is conjugation. Remember this, this is an important point. Conjugation lowers your frequency. So why, now you can see that these electrons can go here, these electrons can go there, there's a single double bond of formation there. And there could be resonance structures possibilities to, for that. So since so talking about that, let's, let me just tell you, tell you what a conjugation system is. It's just single, double, single, double alternations. So a prime example for this one we should know is a benzene ring. Benzene ring is a what call conjugated system where a C double bond C is around 1660 and a benzene is 1600. Why? So even though there are double bonds there, it's a conjugated system. Remember that guys, it's conjugated. Okay, that's pretty much what we have to understand from the knowledge of IR. Let's just do a simple um, problem, which is right here. Know the fact that Right now we can't figure out NMR because we don't we haven't done the videos yet. So watch for my next videos. We will do NMR and then we can combine both of them and we'll work on that. So this is a simple demonstration. So the, they give you your molecular formula, which is C6H9Cl chlorine. And from that, the first thing you always do is degree of unsaturation. You can see the how to do degree of unsaturation by my pre look, looking at my previous videos. So what's the first thing we always do? Look at your 3000 mark and put your dotted lines. So there are some stitches above 3000, which tells you there are this unsaturation. So there's a double, triple bond. It could be anything. We don't know yet. yet. And there's some below, so there is saturation as well. So there's both, both of them. Then in the fingerprint region here, again, not much information can be deduced from there. Another important one is this stretch here, which is around 2200. And another one, which is around 3300. So what two, two functional groups were around 2200? Think about it. Okay, so the two of them were C triple bond C and C triple bond N. Since there's no N in your molecular formula, we cross that out and we know there's a C triple bond C. This stretch was, again, since it's degree of unsaturation, that is your 3,300s are usually the stretch for CH, which is attached to a C, like that, so this stretch. Now, this tells you that there's a triple bond and it's terminal. Why is it terminal? Because there's an H and there's two triple bond C. So we know that our structure, for looking just the IR, looks something like that. So this is how you can use an IR to identify what functional groups you have. We are going to be doing, I'm going to do another recall video following this one where we just look at problems and see how to look and how to do IR problems. So with that guys, um, that's pretty much it you have to know for IR spectrum. So please rate, comment, subscribe. I hope this was helpful and have a nice day.